Good morning and welcome to 7 at 7. So glad to have you guys with us this morning. I'm excited for the word because Amanda's going to bring it this morning. It's going to be good. Uh, going over some of the fruit of the Spirit, it, I am looking forward to it. But before we hop into that, I want to invite you into the chat. Hop in, say hi, let us know you're there, that you're watching. Like this, share this, and post any prayer requests or prayers that you may have, or praise sure. reports that you may have. <laughs> uh, and then if you see people posting pray, uh, prayer requests, join them in praying and let them know. And you can join them in celebrating some of the praise reports as well. Yes, and I took down my Let It Snow sign in case it was prophetic. We're ready to move on. <laughs> um, and I have a praise report from Terry. She said that we had prayed for a girl who was hit by a bus, and now the girl is awake, talking, and healing. So we are praising God for that and continuing to pray for a complete healing. Yes. So with that, that is awesome. What's the word for this morning? <laughs> so if you look in Galatians 5, it starts to talk about the works of the flesh. It talks about the fruits of the spirit. And so I just want to kind of talk about some of this. So you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. This is verse 13 of Galatians. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. And so much of this goes to love your neighbor as yourself. It goes into so many beautiful things on how to do that. And then it talks about what happens when you live for the flesh and what that looks like. And then we get to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Against such things there is no law. That's just like a little blurb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you think, huh, what does that mean? How do, how do I live those out? You know, when I mm -hmm. think about my fruit trees, and first I start with buds. <laughs> Yep. and blossoms, and then they start developing fruit. But when the fruit begins, it's this tiny little, whatever it is, it's just tiny, and it's not good to eat. <laughs> My kids have tried. <laughs> <laughs> Picking it like, oh, it's going to be an apple. Well, not anymore. Now it's just soury yuckiness. <laughs> yep. The texture. But if we let those continue to develop, they become wonderful fruits. Pears, apples, all different things, just like we have the different types of fruits of the Spirit. And it's the same thing in our lives and how we need to cultivate our own selves as our fruit trees. And with my fruit trees, there will occasionally be a branch that doesn't bear fruit. And you'll look at it and you're like, wow, this one branch doesn't have any buds. Mm -hmm. And that has to be cut off. And so when we look at Galatians 5, it talks about all these different works of the flesh and things that need to be cut off because they can't bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Those are things that are of the flesh, that are of the enemy that he tries to push into our lives. And how do we then, if we know what to cut off, how do we cultivate all of these things? And part of that is going to the word and staying as part of the spirit. It says, verse 25, since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Living by the spirit looks like always acknowledging God in all of our ways. Yeah. It looks like when I wake up, He's my first thought. And if for you, if that's not your first thought, that's okay. That's what we work on. That means our fruit just needs to keep growing. And it's not bringing shame upon ourselves, but it's saying, okay, God, if you're not first in my life, how can I make you first in my life? What do I need to change? Do I need to make an alarm on my phone? Do I need to put my Bible right by my bed so that it's something I could think about right away? How can I make sure that I'm able to allow God to cultivate me to produce these fruits? And when I look at my life and I think, hmm, what did I do yesterday? Did my situations show patience? That's always a big one. Yeah. It's really good. I, think I was just looking as you, as you talked. Um, it, it starts out and it goes through and, and telling us not to let our, to use our freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. And as it goes on and says, let's walk by the spirit and you won't um, gratify the desires of the flesh. It states that those desires are there. Yep. I think so often as Christians, we, we think that it's all just going to come easy and that we all going to just want the right things and there can even be a condemnation when we don't. Yeah. And when it just lays this out, it just helped me see that, oh wait, there's, there's different desires that are at war within me and I get to choose which one I'm going to feed. Yes. I'm going to choose what branches I'm going to, or what trees I'm going to fertilize. I'm going to decide yeah. what I'm putting in and that's going to produce a fruit. Yeah, and recognizing that desire in and of itself is not the sin. 
It's what you do with it. And it's just like the temptation. Yeah, and if we recognize that those come and that those things are, are there, then we recognize, oh, I'm going to have to choose what to feed. Yep. I'm going to have to choose because the thing that I feed, that, um, where the, and here he says, um, I say, walk by the Spirit. Fix your eyes here. This is what you're doing. As you choose to fix your eyes here, you're not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. And going, all right, I'm going to choose where I fix my eyes. I'm going to choose my meditation. I'm going to choose what I fill up on. And then I'm going to let that produce a fruit in me. And then I can do a test as it goes on to verses 19 through, I guess, through 21 and then 22 through 23 of going, which set of fruit am I producing? Yeah. And that will tell me what I've been plugged into. Yeah. So if you recognize today that some of the fruits are maybe fleshly in your life, that's okay. That's a place to start. And recognizing that we are always learning, we are always growing. No one is Jesus and has fully arrived. Yeah. But that's something we want to work towards. We want to develop these fruits. And we want to help those in our lives to develop those fruits. I, if I have friends in my life who say that they're Christians and I can see that maybe they need help, then I know to be praying for them. And I know to be encouraging them. That's what we're supposed to do is encourage one another with the word and love each other through that and have patience. Yeah. <laughs> for other people that maybe aren't where we think they should be, but not be condemning or being shameful. I like, I like that. We see them falling short. You can encourage them. There's, yeah. there's this tendency to want to fault find others, but yeah. when we choose to go, I'm going to encourage, I'm going to uplift, well, it's going to, A, it's going to reflect the fruit of the Spirit. But Kindness, patience. Um, but it does gentleness. so much for those around us, and it allows us to help them so much more than just being a fault finder. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so good. Well, let's get into some confessions this morning because it goes quickly. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the lives dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I am more than a conqueror I through am, him. I am more than a conqueror through him. God is my healer and redeemer. God is my healer and redeemer. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I resist the devil. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And he flees from me. My prayers are powerful. My prayers are powerful. And effective. And effective. God, I thank you that we can have powerful and effective prayers. God, that we can come before you, that we can know you, be plugged into you, be connected to you, and have you produce fruit inside of our lives. God, I ask that we'd be filled with your spirit and that there would be an overflow of the fruit of the spirit, that your love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness would be on display in us and through us, that it would draw others towards you and that you would mold us into your image, that we could see your will done, that we could see bodies healed and restored. God, I thank you that we could be connected to you and to see your fruit in our life. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again tomorrow. Be blessed. We will see you on Sunday or on Monday. Be blessed, and we'll see you then. <laughs>